going on everybody, it's the Indoor Hunter and today's video will be a beginner's guide to Wave the Hunter. Whether you're just starting your journey in Wave the Hunter or you've played for a while and you're still getting frustrated by those critters that get away, hopefully this video can help you out. Now the following tips aren't in any necessary order and if you think of something or know something that's not in the video, leave it in the comments below. So let's get started with tip number one, and that's being sneaky and stealthy. This is obviously a hunting game, and because it's a simulator, if you're coming from Call of the Wild, this may be a little more difficult to comprehend because, unlike Call of the Wild, there's no real indicators of how much noise you're making or how visible you are to animals. The best thing you can do while you're stalking your prey is to use the environment around you, whether that's trees, bushes, shrubs, or tall grass. You also want to pay attention to your posture and movement speed. Sprinting is extremely loud and you'll always spook everything around. And if you're standing up in the open, the animals are going to see you. And this may seem like a very simple and basic thing, but unlike Call of the Wild, animals have much better senses and they can actually see or hear you from hundreds of meters away. In this game, your ability to be stealthy will be the difference between not ever seeing an animal or filling your trophy lodge. And that can take a lot of patience, especially when you need to move slow, and I mean slow. My preferred method of movement is crouch walking, and by crouch walking, I will take a few steps forward and then stop for a few seconds, take a few steps forward and stop a few seconds, which is something I'd like to do in real life as well. And this can help dictate your approach to a need zone or an animal. So next, let's talk about money and equipment and what you should look for when you're getting new gear. Money can be hard to come by in this game, especially early in your journey, and I don't recommend spending it on any of the private reserves. And the reason behind that is because each private landowner actually has missions for you that provide pretty decent money, and there's unique animals along the way. So I think it's better just to take the long route, do these missions, get some money, buy better equipment, that way you have a better hunting experience. And so you may ask, well, what should I buy first? I personally recommend getting the binoculars because the better zoom and better optics quality will provide a better experience when you're sitting on the mountaintop, glassing a field, or trying to find the animals hidden th deep within the brush. And when it comes to weapons, that is really going to depend on what kind of animals you're wanting to hunt. Obviously, smaller game requires smaller calibers. Larger game requires larger calibers. I do highly recommend saving up for the Remington rifles, especially the 7600, because A, these weapons are cheaper and they're very, very good. Something else that I'd recommend doing while purchasing equipment is to read the encyclopedia within the game. There's a lot of information within the encyclopedia that is very useful even to uh, veteran players. And when it comes to optics and rifle scopes, I think that's definitely user preference. Now, obviously you wanna upgrade from the starter scope, but where you go from there is up to you, and each scope has their own special um, pluses and minuses for each situation. The animal colors in the game aren't particularly useful right now. That being said, in the future, they probably will be with the inclusion of archery, so I do recommend at some point purchasing them and getting experience with those. That being said, if you're starting out and you're strapped for cash, I wouldn't spend money on them. Let's talk vehicles. The maps in Wave the Hunter are huge, and the vehicles allow you to traverse the landscape much easier and more efficiently than you would on foot. But you can only have one vehicle out at a time and they stay persistently within the world. Meaning if you drive out to a particular hunting spot and you decide to fast travel back to your trophy lodge or a campsite, your car is going to actually stay there. But don't fret. There's actually a couple different ways to get it back. You can physically walk back to it or you can go to the computer at the lodge and recall it there or go to any parking lot sign uh, located at the private landowner's homes and recall it there as well. Your Jeep will also act as a mobile storage unit, so if you need more ammunition or want to change your loadout, you can actually go to the back of the Jeep and everything that you own will be there. Let's go back to those campsites I just mentioned. Those are sprinkled throughout the maps and they act as fast travel points and places that you can actually change the time, so they're very beneficial. I highly recommend hitting trails and exploring, trying to find those campsites, or you can simply look online. I'm sure someone's made a map already of where all these locations are. Um, but that's something I definitely recommend because it's going to make uh, moving around the map a lot easier. Probably the most important tool while out hunting is your hunter sense. This is going to allow you to see animal tracks, animal sign, uh, need zones. It's going to allow you to visualize animal callouts, which direction they're coming from, kind of the mood and tone of what those animals are doing. 
Um, it'll also allow you to, while spotting with your binoculars, um, actually tell the maturity levels of what animals are. And the reason that's important is because there's a herd management uh, mechanic within the game. So you don't necessarily want to shoot just everything that you see. Um, for example, if you've got a herd of whitetail out in front of you and you've got a young buck, it's a one star, or you've got a two star mature, I would probably shoot the two star mature just because genetically it's probably not that great. Um, so you actually want to remove that from the herd. That way the younger, more uh, genetically superior bucks can breed and uh, you, it gets bigger and better trophies as time progresses. Now, I personally uh, will caveat this with I don't know or understand the um, herd management mechanic within the game that well. I do know it's time-based. Um, each animal within the encyclopedia that you will see has a age limit. Um, animals do die. So that's where that herd management comes into play. You want to uh, eventually you'll get to a point where you'll be tracking different herds and making sure you know your matures are still there, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. There's also a male to female ratio that you want to pay attention to. Um, it's not super and overly important. Um, I wouldn't let that ruin your experience in the game, but it is important to note, like you don't want to shoot all the does, for example, or all the bucks from a herd. You want to make sure uh, to ma maintain that ratio. But I digress. Going back to the hunter sense, one of the most important things you're going to be using it for outside of aging animals is tracking them. Um, unless you make a one shot, one kill, and they instantly drop, you're oftentimes going to be tracking the animals down. And hopefully, depending on your shot placement, it's not too far. But sometimes that shot placement can be poor, or you've used wrong caliber, or, you know, there's a lot of factors that come into it. Long story short is when you need to track an animal, that hunter scent is going to be invaluable because it will highlight that blood. It will give you information like if there's air bubbles, for example, if you've made a lung shot, or if there's like green material, if you've made a gut shot, um, et cetera, et cetera. So it's very important to use that. Um, one of the things that I see you complain about most about this game is the difficulty of tracking animals that you've shot. Um, and partly that may be because of how realistic the tracking mechanic is within the game. Um, Blood trails can be hard to see uh, within the tall grass. Um, oftentimes, it can be splattered on uh, tree limbs and, and leaves and twigs and stuff like that. So it's important to use that hunter sense to actually see that and highlight it. Take it slow. Take your time. Don't give up. That being said, sometimes um, there will come a point, though, where the animal may simply actually stop bleeding, and that's because the animal has survived. Um, so at that point, you just need to kind of chalk your loss and move on. But something that I do recommend doing as soon as you shoot an animal, mark it where, you, where it was. That way you can find that initial blood. And then as you move on, you can actually place more and more and more exploration markers. So you can actually place an exploration marker on every single spot of blood that you see. So eventually you'll actually start to see a path forming. So you can kind of estimate where the animal has gone to and hopefully it'll make it easier in finding it. Another nifty little tool that may actually help you in your hunt is the photo mode. This isn't just used for taking pictures of the scenery or a trophy shot. You can actually use this to spot animals uh, that are around you that you may not see with your own eyes. For example, let's say you get a call out from some elk and you're trying to decide if it's worth going after them or not, but you can't see them. You don't have any collars on you. What do you do? You can actually turn on the photo mode and kind of fly around a little bit and actually spot where those animals are. It may seem a little hinky to some people. I don't know. It's something that you can definitely use at your disposal, though. And lastly, probably the most important tip that I can give is have fun with the game and don't get discouraged. As cheesy as that sounds, this game can get frustrating at times. You're going to spook animals. You're going to lose animals. You're going to make those bad shots. It's just part of it. Um, like real life hunting, if it was that easy, they'd just call it shooting, they wouldn't call it hunting. I hope everybody enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe. Be sure to check out the Discord as well. The link will be in the description below. It's a place where you can actually talk to me and the rest of the community, upload screenshots, trophy shots from both Call of the Wild and Wave the Hunter, uh, or even real life you know, hunting experiences as well. Um, you know, Real life photography, that kind of thing. Um, it's a pretty cool spot, um, community is growing, and we'd love to see you there. Uh, that being said, I hope everybody has an awesome day, we'll see you on the next one.